So that's how this works. But there's one really fundamental question that you might already be asking. Uh, and that question is CPU. Uh, both of these are kind of big contact patches. They've got a lot of uh, processing on them. What's my CPU load gonna be like? With the two patches, not such a problem, right? But what happens when I'm up to 10, 15, 20 patches? So what we're gonna do is set it up so that when we're not using a sound, it automatically gets switched off. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this. This is the Rhodes piano rack here and map it to selector as well. I'm gonna do the same thing for the grand piano. Then I'm gonna go into our mapping control, I'll open up this menu here. You can see we have the device on ranges. Uh, with the Rhodes, we're gonna say device is on at zero. And that means only when the selector is at zero, which is when we're at the position on the chain selector that routes MIDI to this uh, instrument, are we gonna get uh, the effect or the, the instrument rack turned on? This one is gonna be at one. If we did another one, it would be two, etc. What this means is if we hit this Rhodes, it actually turns the piano off in Ableton, saving the CPU so it's not running anything. And then if we hit the piano, it turns the Rhodes off. So that way you can have a lot of different instruments loaded up. And as you step through your set using your scene selection, it will actually toggle on and off the uh, different racks inside Ableton, including any effects, anything that's contained within that rack. And this allows you to have much more complicated racks in play for each song without having to worry about the cumulative CPU load adding up so much that your computer starts to glitch out. Now, there's one last little thing that I often do. Uh, I use a larger MIDI keyboard than this, so it has more keys on it. And often in one song, I will have maybe say two different parts that I play. Now I could, you know, have stepped through the song in scenes, but sometimes I'm playing continuously. I don't even have time to switch scenes on the push. It's not realistic. So something I often do is splitting the keyboard into two halves. And so I just know that the top half plays one sound and the bottom half plays the other sound. We're gonna do that with the uh, grand piano. So I'm gonna launch that scene. So our grand piano is loaded. And what we're gonna do is group this grand piano into its own little rack. And then uh, I'm gonna unmap that and map that instead so that we're turning off the whole rack rather than just the grand piano inside it. And then we'll go into our mapping here and see how it's reverted back to a 64 to 127, we want to put that back to one to one. So that way the whole rack, including all the layers, gets a split. And what we're gonna do is put the grand piano in the kind of lower half, and then let's just pick pretty much any sound, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's say a neon piano, that sounds like fun. And what we're gonna do is go into the key selector, and this actually lets us control which keys get routed to which sound. So we're gonna make everything below the C here which is a C4 at the moment. That's because I'm an octave up. I'm gonna go an octave down. Now that's a C3. Everything below C3 is piano. And everything above C3 is this neon piano sound, which doesn't make any noise. So let's uh, find one that does. I have a few kind of dud presets in here from things I've installed. Diver bass, let's try that. That uh, is a massive patch. We'll probably make noise. Yeah, so. So this is a super common technique for playing, say, lead with the right hand and bass with the left hand, but also just, you know, uh, in the chorus we play up here and the verse we play down here. Uh, so that's kind of the core mechanics of how I've done this setup for keys. You can apply exactly the same principle to any other MIDI instrument, like a guitar. Uh, a guitar is not a MIDI instrument, like a pad controller. You can also do this for live processing of things like vocals, or in my case, I'm using a lot of uh, guitar running through guitar rig to produce very ambient guitar sounds. So the principle is very much the same. We take an audio track, we call it guitar, we would set the monitor in. I don't have any audio inputs plugged in right now, but just imagine you've got your guitar connected there. The trick is, because you can't just double click here and put like a, an empty MIDI track on here, I um, go to my um, 
uh, arrangement view, and I grab any sample, just a little short one, like so. Um, what I'm trying to do is make a little clip of nothing. Unfortunately, you can't consolidate nothing in Ableton, it complains. So what you gotta do is consolidate this with this little snippet here, and then take this little bit here, slice it out, consolidate it. So now I have a little audio snippet of nothing, and I'm gonna say guitar FX number one here. So that's gonna be my dummy clip. Uh, the monitoring is, well, uh, we're not gonna plug, uh, we'll take it in from the Steinberg, which shouldn't actually give me any audio. There we go. So you can see once we've got the monitoring in set up, the clip grays out. So that indicates that it's never gonna play, but it can still be launched. So we're gonna set it to gate again, and uh, quantization none again. And uh, in this case, we're just gonna pull up Guitar Rig, uh, Native Instruments, Guitar Rig, and uh, we'll just grab a preset in Guitar Rig. I don't really care, just take 80 solo. So now we have Guitar Rig 80 solo, and we're gonna go through the same process. We're gonna put it in a rack, we're gonna use the chain selector, we're gonna add another instance of Guitar Rig, and this one is gonna be all and none. Uh, that doesn't do anything, let's try that. And so now we have these, uh, two different uh, presets. I'll call this song that number one for song number one and we'll call this uh, for song number two and We're gonna do the same thing map the macro one there shift number two here uh, Map the on off controls of both of them so that we're not running multiple instances of guitar rig at the same time Go in here make sure the first one is zero zero the second one is one one So now we have a chain selector that toggles our guitar rigs on and off. And then, again, the same process. This one here on the envelopes mode is a zero. And then this one here will be set to one. As you can see now, depending on which clip we launch, it'll change the guitar rig preset and turn any ones we're not using off. So now, on our push, One scene launch control toggles presets for both guitar rig and for a keyboard. And you can add this up. In my live set, it's uh, two keyboards, one pad controller, a vocal channel, and a guitar channel. So each scene launch is actually toggling five separate things. Plus, and this is, this is much more arcane, it's also sending MIDI out to my uh, band member's uh, Andrew's computer, and he has his MIDI set, or his scene launches MIDI maps to do the same thing. So my computer is controlling five kind of sets of instruments in my computer, and then two sets of instruments in his computer. So all of that with one button press, and it's really easy to rearrange. As long as you've uh, labeled these clips in kind of a logical way, you can just move them around anywhere. Once you've built this, it's kind of there to stay. So this is one of my favorite kind of live performance techniques, and I think it really, really streamlines uh, how you can perform with Ableton on stage. I hope this is useful. Uh, I'm Will Marshall, and thanks for watching our Permine channel. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and thank you. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pyramine tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at pyramind.com.